As time goes by, the way you have sex becomes different, routine, and even dull. And sometimes the spice you need is in a Brooklyn basement. Um, my, my name is Luis Cortez. Um, I'm of Mexican and Panamanian descent. Um, growing up in New York City, you know, especially uh, uh, in Park Slope. It was fucked up, but there was still enough open-minded things going on where I was exposed to a lot of things. You know, when I reached a certain age, made it really... Um, made accessing sex positivity and would have meant a lot easier. Now, as I get further into sex positive lifestyle and I'm exploring polyamory with my partner, we started our swingers. You know, the, uh, the, the reformed fuckboy in me is just like, holy shit, this, there's a way to do this without hurting nobody. And what people don't get is when you hurt other people, you hurt yourself, right? Um, there are situations where I'm not going to be the one to talk about it because I'm a cis hetero dude. And there's some things I just don't get. I may empathize, but I just don't get it. So I was dealing with a lot of guilt around my, my behavior. And, you know, after going through a divorce and the dust is settling, my fiance and I were on the train one day and I'm just like, you know, um, this is at the beginning of a relationship. And I brought up to her, I was like, hey, you know, have you ever, thought about a threesome. So her thought was, I want another woman. And I was like, no, nah, no, nah, what about another dude? And, and she was like, what? And I think that threw her back a little bit, a little twinkle in her eye. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm open to that. And that kind of started it. We started out as swingers. Um, it wasn't to bring back a spark in our relationship. It wasn't because we wanted other people. It was simply because we, for lack of better words, realized that we were freaks. Like, this is what I'm into. Like, I'm not ashamed of the shit. Um, Decolonization of sex and gender entails a lot of things. It's a process. And, it, and as we engage in it in real time, more often we're realizing it's broadening. When we first started talking about it, it was really just about learning to look at ourselves and each other without the layers of shame, cultural shame, um, religious shame, religious guilt, all that bullshit that, that was essentially a, not a byproduct, but an intentional weight put on us by colonization, right? It's not about it. It's like they did this shit on purpose. Real-time decolonization, the sex of being in a space where you're seen as a human. It's a move away from the white gaze. It's not that we don't have any white people in our community. We do what I'm saying, but we're not going to fucking like pander to you. You know, that's not what we're doing. Um, our intent is not to make white people feel comfortable. I think you've White folks are, are okay in that department. Black and brown women and indigenous women and black, brown, and indigenous LGBTQI plus humans feel as comfortable as possible in a space that is black and brown forward. We would go to play parties or sex parties or whatever, that they were overwhelmingly white. And me, I think when I first started going to these parties, I was, it was like sensory overload. So I was just like, what the fuck is going on here? You know, it's like, these spaces are really, really white. And, and I, and it clicked with me and I'm like, okay, cool. Like this is something, as soon as I was aware of it, I was like, yeah, this, this shit ain't cool, man. Like, you don't know, like I, I, are there any black and Latino freaks out there? I don't, I don't, uh, but not, it really took, honestly, within a couple of months, we had a cool community of about. 15 to 20, beautiful thing to be seen and heard in a space where like, you know, you're not hypersexualized. You're not looked at as a vessel for my pleasure. And I've seen, and particularly women have breakthroughs, um, like serious breakthroughs where they're like, holy shit, this is like, I'm here butt ass naked and no one is leering at me. The way I, someone leers at me when I just walk out the house, you know, I don't have a bunch of dudes hitting on me. Um, I could actually talk to people because the pretense, we all know what the common interest there because we're vocal about it. You know, we're like, yo, we enjoy sex. We're hoping to possibly have a sexual experience, a sexual connection, but it's not necessary. You know, it's not a priority. The priority with our events is communication and building community um, and building support systems because when you shed a layer of guilt or shame, right? It's like pulling back the wound, right? The next day, you're going to have questions. You're going to have doubts because in the moment, you could be down for whatever day, the next week, you could really go through some real 
real trauma. So we're learning to offer support systems for that. We have a, an amazing sister named Dr. Mel. She's a clinical psychologist. And we do an after, after the party aftercare on Zoom. And, you know, we just discuss what people are feeling, men and women. And we're hoping to grow it uh, into a, a women's group, a men's group, into a non-binary group. They even think about coming into the space. There's some work that they need to do on themselves. Um, because, like I said, it, it could, it's heavy shit. This, this is not like a little party. This is like very intentional, very heavy vibes. Very like, like, like you're going to walk away a little different. We vet people. Um, go to our IG, Susia NYC, and there's a vetting form. For that vetting Coming in, you need to understand what consent is. Coming in, you need to understand that, you know, learning how to say no is key because a lot of us don't know how to say no. So how do you establish your healthy boundaries coming into the space? In the next five years, Susia is able to develop a high standard for black and brown people across the board at these play parties because um, I think we got into the game a few years before everyone got onto it. And I think it's cool. Um, I just think that men, especially parties that are men centered or run by men, don't do the work to make sure it's safe. And can you create community and make some money? There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so we're hoping to like really raise the standards, man. Um, if we got to shame niggas into it, we're going to shame niggas into it because there are, there are parties that allow known consent violators to attend, all right? Uh, houses don't communicate as much um, because I think for people to acknowledge that you harbored a consent violator means to really reestablish your whole shit and to admit that, hey, you know what? I was a part of this too. You know, so we want to raise these standards. We want more communication. Um, I hope Susia is able to, not that I hope, Susia will, you know, be in other cities. 